Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. Hope everyone had a good holiday here. Yep, yep. How are you doing, Jared? You know, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. Kyle, let's not dick around. How about that? How's that? Does that count as how are you doing? Because if that counts as how we're doing or how I'm doing, then I think uh, not in the mood to dick around would be how I'm doing. All right, Jared, it is time for another fun episode of Know Your Enemy. Hopefully not the last one in a while. Yes, and going down the SCC country here to Atlanta, take on Georgia. Ah. Burn it down. (laughs) Burn it. Be a lot of burn it to the ground. A lot of lot of references here. Jared. Fire, That's fire, fire, fire. <laughs> burn down Atlanta. General Sherman would be proud. My chair's yeah. falling. I, I put I put in the uh in the description here, Jared. I says Peach Bowl, Georgia, Sherman, burn Atlanta. Let's do this. Hey, hey, Kyle. Real, real quick. One What's up? the see now here I am dicking around. The, uh, the the thumbnail to the YouTube video uh, is a depiction of Atlanta burning. And here's the thing. Staring right in everybody's face all year. Again, if you're if you're on the YouTube version, if you, if you look down in our, in our little branded section here. Of the of the show, right where the logo is and where the rotating logos are. That's a historical depiction of the siege of Atlanta. It's been sitting there the entire time. And quite frankly, I'm not one to 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 read meanings into thing. But it's been sitting there on the YouTube frame all year. It's been sitting there the entire time. You are sick. Yeah, I am. I'm sick right, in the let's, head. All right, let's let's get into it because we got a lot. We got a lot, a lot to cover. Georgia, the the uh, reigning champions coming back to trying to repeat as champions again here, and we we talked about it before, Jared. A number of a number of weeks. Georgia is just a better version of of Michigan. So what? Yep. And what 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 does Ohio State have to do here to beat Georgia when they couldn't take care of business a month ago? Here, you got a month to be prepared for Georgia. Try to fix the issues that you have. Uh, you're you're down Trey Henderson. You're down yep. one running back here. Hopefully, you get a lot more players uh, healthy here. What what yep. does Ohio State have to do? They have to learn their lessons. Listen, I, 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 I still believe that Ohio State's better than Michigan. And I know, I know they lost. I know. I get it. I'm not, I saw it. I was there. But I still believe they're a better team. And by the way, Vegas agrees with me. Tossing that out there, Vegas already has odds if Ohio State and Michigan were to meet again. Vegas is giving Ohio State the edge. That being said, Ohio State's also giving the edge to Georgia in this particular game, six and a half points. Kyle, um, Ohio That's State, six and a half, less than a touchdown. Less than a touchdown. And here's the thing. Um, I believe, and someone fact-checked me, I might be getting a couple of these details wrong. The last 10 times Ohio Mm -hmm. State uh, was the underdog in a game, they are 8-2. and and 8-2 whilst the underdogs. Yeah, that's... I think I heard something like that too. Uh, I think there's something just recently here. Uh, yeah, I, I believe it was eight and two here. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to clarify that here. But yeah, it, 
Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm looking here. Last 10 entries, eight and two as underdogs. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, Ohio State plays better as underdogs. Ohio State plays better as underdogs. Now, they're not underdogs too often, obviously, because I think there's, there's 10 times, Kyle, I think go back nearly 10 years. It doesn't happen except with Ryan Day. That is false. They were underdogs, I believe, to Clemson in 2020 and won that game. So uh, you're wrong. No, that was uh, last year. That was last year. They they beat Clemson as an underdog in the year. Two years before that, they they did lose to Clemson. So those those were their two losses as underdogs. Was Alabama um, in 2020? In 20. Well, it, it's technically 2020. Yeah. It's second. Uh, I'm doing the yeah, season, yeah. not the bowl game date. Okay. <laughs> I'm yes, doing the season yeah. date, not the bowl game date. So yeah, no, no, no. I, I was, I was correct. Okay, okay got, we've been doing it all year. Let's take a look at Georgia. Let's take a look at some of their rankings. Uh, let's let's take a look at some of their their big games this year. They started off the year with what has to be called the most impressive win of the year. They they destroyed Oregon, who. Finishes in the top 10, correct? I um, mm-hmm. think so. 49 to 3. And it could have been a lot worse. Like, Georgia pulled the, their foot off the gas. This could have been a worse game if they wanted it to be. No. Uh, Bo Nix destroys Georgia, says Gangland. I, you, you, Bo Nix destroyed Georgia, or excuse me, Oregon. Oregon is I meant to say 15th, Oregon. by the way. Okay, 15th. Um, but still. Bo Nix destroyed Oregon, is what Gangland said. You don't lose as bad as they did without it being a, a full team loss. Like, you, 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 can't, you can't simplify it that much. Um, they went on. They beat Samford the next week. They beat South Carolina the next week. And I know South Carolina finished strong, but in September they stuck. So let's not let's not read too much into that. Um, now Kyle, interestingly enough, struggles against Kent State, and then Missouri after that. Yes, and then so uh, two of. I won't say the two worst, but two of the worst teams on their schedule, Missouri and Kent State, close games. Should we read into that? That was, I was, what, three months ago? It, it, <laughs> so it was, probably it was not, three months ago. Probably not, Jerry. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no. Uh, there, were, there were a couple of broken plays that Kent State was able to take advantage of, which is why it made it such a close game, but like many of their other games that we saw Georgia kind of similar with Michigan in a way, again, a lot of comparisons with Michigan. Some of the games they struggled in the first half, but then come back in the second half with their talent that they have, their defense takes over and then their offense does enough to, to win games. I mean, you look at, you look at the Tennessee game. Yeah. They, they did what they needed to, to win that game. And, Recently, they played Kentucky, where they only scored 16 points in that game, where they beat they beat Kentucky 16 to six. It they do enough to to win the game, but then there's other times you see them just manhandling teams like uh, like LSU in the SEC championship game, yeah. 50 points against LSU there. Yeah, and, so and that, what, that was a good so LSU which, team. So which Georgia, which Georgia team are we going to see? Are we, are we going to see the team that? puts up 40, 50 points? Or are we going to see the Georgia team that puts up 26, 16 points? And it it, it, it really comes down to, honestly, how well their quarterback, 10th um, year senior Stetton <laughs> uh, Bennett. Yes. Um, Stetson Bennett is not a good quarterback. He's not a bad quarterback. Let me, let me, say that real quick he's not a bad quarterback but he's nothing special 
Um, I think Ohio State learned in the Michigan game that you can't you can't just uh, can't you can't just let the other quarterback give the opportunity to totally beat you. Um, Stenson Bennett again, not a great quarterback, um, but if you let him beat you, he will. He's not going to take over the game. Stetson is a hat. He's the fourth, too. He's the fourth Stetson in a row. I think there's a I think there's a thing about not about not going up to the fourth when naming a child, but we'll let that go. Um yeah, they struggle against Kentucky, who was not a good football team. Um, it, it, but again, when they played teams that were good, that were very good, is when they showed out the most. The one exception you can find on this list was Tennessee. Um, still, they, they, held, they held Tennessee's offense, which is a, one of the best offenses in the country, to 13 points. Uh, did... Was that the game that Hooker got hurt? Uh, no. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. But, yeah. But, 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 but Hooker couldn't do anything that game. He he didn't have two hundred yards of um passing in that game. He just they they took everything deep from him and said, "Hey, you got to beat us up front." And that's where right. Georgia's strength is at their front seven, their linebackers, their defensive line. And they, they trust them to make the plays. And they, they just sat back and didn't allow them to um, make the big plays that they've all, that they've done. In all year and this long. is, and this is a game that if you're Ryan day and crew that I hope you watched, I hope you watched several times, Tennessee stylistically, not dissimilar from Ohio state. Good quarterback, good wide receivers. They want to beat you over the top. So if you're looking for a, if you're looking for a negative, if you're looking for a negative for Ohio State, them shutting down Tennessee is not a great sign. Uh, if you're looking for a positive, look at their last game. <laughs> yeah, a game how, in which they won much, by twenty much, points. But look, but looking at how how well LSU was able to pass the ball, they passed for over 500 yards in that game. Yeah. So, so again, look at, look at recently what LSU LSU did. So you have to look at that game as well. What did LSU do correctly that Tennessee didn't do correctly? It makes it, it sounds real easy when I just say it like that. Of course. It's the actual figuring out that matters because here's the, here's the thing though. And this is, you know, when you start to get into the chess mass chess match of things, LSU is also, or excuse me, George is also well aware that Ohio state's watching the hell out of that LSU tape in the same way that Georgia is and Ohio state is aware that they are watching the hell out of that Michigan tape. As Kyle pointed out, as we've been saying all year, and we've been saying it all year, Georgia's just better Michigan. Mm. So, so if you're Ohio State, you have to also be watching the tape of that Michigan game right, and so say, where did things go wrong and how do we be better? In the same way that... George is, is also looking at their own LSU tape and saying, what did we do wrong and where can we be better? So if you're Ohio State, you look at, you look at this Georgia offense here. Yeah. What, what do you do to stop this offense? What, what, is, what is the one thing that you should really focus on to stop Georgia? They have a really nice offensive line. Um, they have an amazing tight end and Stetson, although two amazing tight ends and Stetson, although again, not like from a physical standpoint, from a 
physical gift standpoint, not anything special. He's also 25 years old. You're not going to rattle him. He's like, he's an adult. Most of the players on the field are essentially children, young adults, basically. But Stenson Bennett's a 25 year old. You know anything about human anatomy? If you know anything about neuroscience, it might be a step too far. Like that 25 is an important, like that's, that's like your, your brain isn't done baking until 25. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're, 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 you're not going to rattle them. You can yeah, rattle you're, most you're, college quarterbacks because they're not full fledged adults. They're not emotionally mature. You're not going to do that with Stetson Bennett. You're going to have a, you're going to have a quarterback who doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Who's going to take exactly what you give him. And you just can't give him anything. You can't rattle him and you can't give him anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, you look, a you, couple of points that you uh, pointed out there, Jared. Offensive line, just absolute studs up there. They have they have an all-American um, offensive lineman, which Ohio State does as well, uh, in Warren uh, McLennan, too, um, who, leads, who leads the team there to protect Bennett. Bennett's only been sacked seven times, but Ohio State has done a really good job of protecting C.J. Stroud as well, where he's only been sacked eight times. Yeah. So pretty, pretty, pretty much very similar there. So you have to find a way to get at Bennett. He's not going to be, um, he's not going to be shaken that well, that much just because of how long he's been with the program there, but you got to get at him quickly uh, somehow, because if you're going to give him too much time, you just got, there are two tight ends up Bowers and Washington. Who's just, it doesn't matter who you're going to put on them. You got those big athletic tight ends. You, you, if you don't get to the quarterback in like five, six seconds, those tight ends, one of them is going to get open and get some chunk yardage there. So you got to be able to be creative on defense, get at Bennett, confuse him because trying to, trying to guard, especially Bowers who leads the team in receptions and yardage and reception touchdowns for the team. That's your, that's your main focus. You want to do not only, not only on the reception part, but Bowers is, the overall uh, best tight end uh, um, in the, I think in the country, he, he does everything right. He, he blocks really well. Didn't on, he get, didn't he get all American? He did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he also does a really good job on run blocking too, which you see Georgia and pretty much almost seems like every, every year in the past five years, they use like three, four different running backs here. So and and it's a lot of the success is based on their tight ends being able to block really well too. Is Lad McConkey playing? Uh, we I mean we don't know. I, I think they're you know I, I think it's kind of like a yeah. Well, I mean recently this I think in, within the past week here, uh, Kirby said he's excited to hopefully get um, Lad back as well as uh, the offensive lineman I mentioned and McClendon as well. He's he's. Excited. Really glad to hopefully. That's some <laughs> wonderful coach yes. speak. Wonderful coach speak. <laughs> I I would expect both of them to play. Would be my assumption. Mm-hmm. My assumption is I'm expecting both of them to play. Yep. 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 By the way, and like a lot of focus, and rightfully so, a lot of focus is put on the uh, Georgia defense. But as Kyle is pointing out, offense is not spectacular necessarily but wildly efficient again you know sort of taking on the personality of their quarterback they have less less sacks than we do yep um points per game seventh in the country just shy of 40 points a game yards per game seventh in the country just shy of 500 yards a game Points per play, number six in the country. They they get over half of a point for every play they run. 
yards per play, fourth in the country, a full seven yards they average on every single play. Third down conversion percentage, they convert over 50% of the time, 52.74, number two in the country. Red zone scoring percentage, number one in the country at 98.4%. We're talking about a team that is just insanely efficient. Uh, number three in the country yards per rush every time they rush the ball. And again, you want to talk about, they have a great stable of running backs. They have a great offensive line. Um, they average 5.7 yards every time they run the ball. Every time they pass the ball, uh, they get 8.6 yards. It's a good team. And it and kind of goes back to what I what I talked about. What does Ohio State need to do? They need to be equally efficient. I think they need to be able to um punch for punch, um, go with Georgia here. They they go down the field and score a touchdown. Ohio State has to respond right then and there because they could get out of hand real quick if if Georgia makes some plays or the offense gets off. Gets off the field too quick. They they got it. They got to be efficient, just just like Georgia has been. I'm like I'm throwing all these numbers at you. They've straight up taken their foot off the pedal a lot of the times too. I mean um, to be fair, Ohio State Ohio State has done that as well too. Sure. We, we we talked about how many how much how many more yards and more touchdowns would CJ have if he played all year? Cause that's all we heard about in the first half of the year was, I mean, Oh, if CJ only played, if CJ played in the fourth quarter, he would, he would have over 4,000 yards, 40 over 40 touchdowns. And I mean, Ohio state's kind of the same way too. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of people would say they would have wanted a little bit more McCord in the second half, but for what it's worth. Um, but yeah, the penalty statistics, again, wildly efficient. Um, only uh, they're 22nd in the country penalties per play, 16th in the country per game. Um, they're just a wildly efficient football team. Kyle, is it time to talk about their defense? Yeah. And, and what more to talk about them than their two main guys um, to really focus on? Their, um, their two studs, uh, Jalen Carter and Chris Smith. Uh, yeah. They're both, both of them consensus all Americans, rightfully so. They, they just, they take over on, on games there and definitely players to, to really, uh, try to stay away from as much as possible. Yeah. Um, Chris Smith is a safety. Uh, just, just to note in case anyone's wondering um, three interceptions on the year, five tackles for loss, 50 tackles. Um, his counterpart uh, Starks, no slouch either actually has more tackles. Um, one less interception, but yeah, the entire defense is good. Like I, I could just go down through this. Is this defense as good as their defense last year? Or no, it's not. They lost a lot of great players last year and they kept some great players, but they also lost some great players. You know what I'm saying? And they replaced a lot of those great players with some pretty damn good players. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, don't don't take me saying is this defense as good as last year's defense no as some sort of insult because it's it's still one of the best defenses in college football this year. Mm -hmm. Um I I don't think you have as many uh, Jalen Carter aside. You don't have like as many like grown men that like Iowa does, right? Um 
then but they are on the other side of that like way more athletic than Iowa. Uh Michigan of course is like somewhere in between those two spots, right? Not quite as Atlant or not quite as uh, athletic as Georgia um but still like a bunch of just mature you know well-seasoned players on the team. Uh Jalen Carter you look at his uh numbers three sacks, 29 tackles, nothing that's like amazing on the stat line. But man, if you let that do not do not for one second, let his stat line throw you off. Um, This man's a disruptor. Um, If Ohio state, if Ohio state's offense just like crumbles, it'll probably be, be because of Jalen Carter. Uh, and it, it also needs to be noted that he's right where Ohio State's been struggling the worst this year mm-hmm. in that interior offensive line. I mean, I mean, you said it like you look at the stats, they don't really they do really don't show it. But <laughs> you look at the the players who come up to make the plays because of, he's so disruptive. And that's the linebackers. Uh, uh, Dumas uh, Johnson and Monden Jr. Both have 64 tackles for the year. So right. they're, they're just making uh making a lot of plays because teams are so focused on trying to make sure Carter isn't making making the plays. But yeah, there's it's, no it, it's tough it's it's tough. It's tough trying to go come up against this kind of defense. But if you're Ohio State, you, you just gotta keep doing what you you've been doing uh all year, and that's getting the ball into your playmakers, getting the ball into your talented wide receivers there. And CJ's done an excellent job all year of doing that. And, and it's not like he has to hold on to the ball that long. I think for the most part, uh, he's able to get rid of the ball relatively quick. And if he's able to get rid of it relatively quick, I don't think it matters what Carter can do. Because there's, I mean, CJ is just going to be able to get the ball so much quicker out to the receivers there. I mean, he's going to, he's going to have to, and this has to be CJ Stroud's game. Um, not to just sit here and throw st- more statistics at you, but I kind of have to, um, a- Georgia's defense yards per rush three number five in the country opponent rushes per game one they're number one in the country opponent rushing yards per game first in the country only letting up three yards per carry only 81.8 yards per game uh that being said there it's not like their past defense is is weak it's not um completion percentage um again when i say completion percentage i mean allowed from the defensive standpoint 16th in the country uh yards per pass 14th in the country um if you look at like uh, opponent uh, passing yards per game. They fall all the way to 57th, but that's because teams just pass on them so damn much because they're behind and they can't run the ball. Um, they are okay, opponents passing plays per game, which is, this is just the number of the passing attempts against them. This is just how many times the other team tries to pass the ball. 131st in the country teams just straight up. Don't try to run the ball against them either because they just find no success or because they fall behind or they're, they just don't try, but teams straight up just don't even try to, to, to run the ball against them. They basically go in and just start throwing the ball. Yep. All right. I got, I got a cup. Go ahead. I got a, I got a couple of keys for for um 
for Ohio State to win this game here. Got a couple of things that uh, trend well for Ohio State if one at least one of these happens. Okay. If Ohio State in their last not since 2001 season, so the last two seasons here, if Ohio State forces at least one fumble, they force at least one fumble, Jared. Okay. They are nine and zero. Oh. Now that's a if, forced fumble. That's not a recovered fumble. Forcing at least one fumble since the 2021 season, Ohio State is nine and zero oh, among, which is tied for best among Power Five teams. Okay, uh, is- Georgia, by the way, is 51st in the country on giveaways. Uh, they average 1.3 giveaways a game. Okay, Ohio State. When committing, committing less than 60 yards of penalties. Okay. Since the 2021 season. They are 12 and 0 when committing less than 60 yards of penalties. Okay, Kyle, here's. Sorry, sorry, sorry to, sorry to yuck your yum. And and then, and then the last, the last one here, Jared. Yeah. Ohio State. Since the 2021 season, yeah, they are 21 and 0 when they when they are allowing less than five yards per rush. Okay, I'm sorry to yuck your yum. You keep saying since the start of the 2021 season. Mm-hmm. So you're basically saying when they don't play Michigan. <laughs> I mean, because they've only just, they've just, only just, lost just, two games in that span. I'm just trying to be positive here, Jared. Things that Ohio State needs to do in this game: stop Georgia from running the ball, stop committing stupid penalties, and get a turnover or two in there. And Ohio State has a very, very good shot at winning this game. Hey, and thanks for trying to bring some positivity to this, but. I try, Jared. I try. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a big enough sample size, especially considering, like I said, Ohio State only lost two, two games all year. Or I mean, uh, two games in that in that span. So for the last two years, um, Georgia. Okay, here's one for you, Kyle. Here's one for you. All right. No field goals, especially if you get inside the twenty. No field goals. That's a key. That is, yeah. Here's the problem. <laughs> I already told you Georgia is number one in red zone offense. They're also number one in red zone defense. Um, opponents only score sixty percent of the time when entering the Georgia red zone. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's That's insane. Pretty darn good. <laughs> They score 98% of the time. Their opponents only score 60% of the time. Now, once again, we can talk about like why this could be a statistical anomaly, right? If you're up big quickly, which Georgia has been several times this year, teams mm-hmm. are more likely to go for it inside the 20, right? Like the, you can kind of explain some of these statistics, not a way. Let's let's not let's not say you explain them away, um, because that's not fair. They're still doing an amazing job, but maybe that's why they're number one and not number ten. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't explain them completely away, but it, it might give you an indication why they're you know one. Mm-hmm. Um, opponents, um, opponent points per game, thirteen point eight. Uh, yards per game only averaging slightly over 300, which puts them at 10th in the country. Um, yards per play at 4.7. So if Ohio State wants, the, wants to win this game, they're going to need to get, I want to say, six to seven yards per play. Okay. 
they're going to need to score touchdowns in the red zone. And you're going to have to get close to. I'm not even asking for over. You have to get close to 50% on third downs. 50% would be great for this game. Third down completion percentage of about 50% would be amazing for this game. Which, by the way, approximately doubles George's current defensive third down conversion percentage, which is like 282 which makes it which is fifth best and fifth best in the country, by the way, obviously turnovers, right? Like you said it, but obviously, right? Like you're going to have to get turnovers. This is a spot where Georgia is not amazing. They're just middle of the road in the country. As far as creating turnovers, they they're better than average. Or excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm looking at penalties. Um, both, both on offense and defense, both giving and taking away they're they're an average football team in the turnover game, nothing spectacular there. So that's an area where you're going to have to make some hay. You're going to have to protect the ball. You're going to have to create some turnovers. What we've not seen a lot from, uh, Jim Knowles's defense this year, we've not seen a lot from. Will Ryan Day be calling? Okay. Um, when what we've not seen Jim Knowles do a lot this year that I think they're going to have to implement in this football game is a lot of bend but don't break. I I would expect them to not be super aggressive defensively in this game, but hyper aggressive offensively in this football game, I think would be my expectation. Yeah. Um, yeah, just because, yeah, because when they went up against Michigan there, they, they dared, they dared Michigan to throw and, and, and we, we saw it. They did not have to be accurate at all <laughs> to, to complete some of those passes. Yes. Yeah, so don't, uh, don't let Georgia get big plays. Don't be hyper aggressive on defense. Let them get some first downs. Play more conservative on defense than you've been so far this year. Keep everything in front of you. Try and force some field goals. Try and force, um, you know, make do to them what Michigan and all the other teams have done to Ohio State this year. Mm -hmm. What you can't do is let up a lot of big plays on defense. Yep. Agreed. You can't let up a lot of big plays on defense. You're going to have to sit back. Like I said, let Georgia get some yards. Let Georgia get some first downs. Make them make mistakes and force field goals. Tighten up in the red zone. Chop Daddy says, no, play aggressively both sides. If they had done what I'm saying right now against Michigan, they would have won that football game. I mean, how, how, how often did we see Ohio State get beat over over top because they were being so aggressive? It's it just it just what it was. Zach says, let's be realistic. How badly we're gonna get demolished. Um I don't think we're getting demolished. No, I said a from a from the beginning of the season, not from the beginning, from about October on that Ohio state could play with anyone in the country and man, our, our confidence as an entire fan base has fallen way off since then. Our confidence fallen way off since then. And you could make the argument that Ohio state peaked too early. Ohio state in October looked unstoppable. Looked absolutely unstoppable. And I mean, Ohio this, State this, in November this, so, didn't. Is it, that feels, health related? You know, are you, you know, you, you, you aren't getting Henderson back, but you're going to get a healthy chop. You're going to get a healthy Hayden. 
you're going to you're going to have, you know, the healthiest version of this team that you've had basically all year. I this feels Jared so much of when Ohio State played Alabama in 2014. Like everybody everybody was thinking, oh, let's 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 just make it a good game. I I, I don't want Ohio State to get killed. I want to, I just want this to be a good game. I want Ohio State to show up and um, make it a close one. And and that's, that's the feeling that I've been getting these past few weeks here. And you know what, that's the kind of game that Ohio State tends to play pretty well. Um, I mean, again, going back to like 2014, when Ohio State beat Michigan and going into the uh, conference championship game, no one, no one thought that they were going to win fifty nine nothing against Wisconsin, right? And then, and then playing Alabama the next game, oh, we we just want them to look good here. Ohio State has everything that they need to beat Georgia here. They their defense is vastly improved from last year. Yep, they got they got studs in their um, in their wide receiver core that can make plays. Yep, even even without Trey. You still got running backs. We haven't had Trey all year. Can we can we just say that? We haven't had Trey all year. Yeah. He he and had you, that plantar you, fasciitis injury early on. And you have, he hasn't and you been have himself one, the entire year. And you have one of the best quarterbacks in the country taking snaps for you as well. Yeah. They they got every they got everything that they need to win this game. They just need to go out there and execute and don't play scared. And I, I and I think that's what and I think that's what we'll see this uh, this weekend. Um, and I, like I said, like I want him to play very conservatively on defense, but I think they need to play hyper aggressively, hyper aggressively on offense. Kyle, how much are you? If you're Ryan Day, if you're uh, Kevin Wilson. How much are you planning on running the ball? I'd say probably about. I'd say probably about 35 percent of the time. That's low. That's very low. Mm-hmm. No, I, I I completely understand. But in this game here, they have to pass, in order to open up the run game. They they have to. It's. This is the most talented front seven in the country. And they have to do that to, to get their, uh, to get the run game going. But Ohio State has the tools to do that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't have to list out the wide receivers that, <laughs> that, that CJ Stroud um, can throw it to or right, in tight ends. Just get them out into your playmakers and let them make plays. That's what you need to do. Get the ball, yeah. Get the ball out to Marvin Harrison. Get the ball at Buka. Get the ball to the tight ends, and then hand it off to Chop to get four or five yards. Yeah. And do we see Sunny versus Washington? No, I don't think we no. see a lot of Sunny in this game. Nope. Maybe we try more draws. I think that's a. I think that's a good call. Um. The problem with that, like a lot of the problems Ohio State's going to have offensively um, is Jalen Carter. <laughs> um, Jalen Carter's a monster. Um, All right, let's let's go ahead and get into our our picks here, Jared. So we'll, we'll uh, just just want to say real quick, uh, Keely Ringo against Marvin Harrison this game will be fun to watch. I'm just tossing that out there. Sorry. Go ahead. Let's get into the predictions. All right. Ohio state player to watch in this game, Jared. I'll go, I'll go first here. Uh, A lot, a lot of the tension will be on CJ Stroud, rightfully. So a lot of the attention will be on Marvin Harrison jr. Rightfully. So But what about the second wide receiver? What about the second wide receiver that, uh, that can make the plays that I think Ohio state has a really good shot at um, getting open to get those under passes there. And I'm, I'll go with Abuka here. I think this is, I think this is a good game that Abuka 
is able to get a lot of pa- catch a lot of passes, convert those first downs to keep the drive open to um, to get some momentum going. So I think I think this is a good I think this is a good game for Abuka here. So I'll I'll go with him to convert a lot of those third and shorts to continue the drive. Drop Daddy says I have a secret play the bubble screen. Gangland <laughs> says Drop Daddy onto something. Then Zach says bubble screen may actually work on this one. I've actually seen some footage of a lot of teams successfully running bubble screens bubble screens against <laughs> Georgia. State. Kent State. It was Kent State. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Was it? Uh, I think it was also Mizzou. Um, like it's the obvious answer. I'll I'll say it anyway. Uh, it's C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud is in like legacy salvation mode. It's it's that simple. He's in legacy sal- salvation mode right now. Um, he has all of had all of the hype as the best quarterback, if not you know one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the country coming into this season. Um. Now now this is but you know he had two starts against Michigan, lost them both. Went to the Heisman twice which is an amazing accomplishment. Didn't win either of them, but I, I really don't care. The Heisman's stupid. Um, but CJ Trout's in legacy salvation mode right now. Nothing's going to fix this legacy faster than winning this football game. And then of course, one more, um, especially if that one more is, is against Michigan. And I don't care what anyone else is saying. I want that so much. I want to play Michigan more than I want to beat Georgia. It's funny because I, I talked to a few coworkers and they they were asking me the same thing. Like, do, do you want Michigan to win so you can yes. play them again? I'm like, absolutely. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Here, here's the problem with that sentiment, Kyle. <laughs> you said, absolutely, I want Michigan to win. And I get it. Here's the problem, though. Ohio State plays second. Doesn't matter. Well, it does. Because, listen, if Ohio State doesn't beat Georgia, I hope Michigan gets their faces blasted off. All right. That's fair. Yes, (laughs) that's fair. (laughs) But we won't know is the point is Michigan plays first. So I can't I I can't cheer for Michigan just in case, just in case. But if. But if Ohio State wins and Michigan wins, the I winner, won't be mad. Whoever wins that game, and it will be Ohio State, uh, it will be bragging rights for all of eternity against those two teams. There's no game past or future that will that will meet that game. You, you, you beat your rival at a national title and you take away that national title away from your rival. That is Question. the most important thing that could ever happen. Question. So high state, and this is, this is a rhetorical question. I'm not expecting you to answer this Kyle. And I'm, cause I'm pretty sure the answer is no. You might need to get like Jack Park or something on this. If Ohio State and Michigan ever played neutral site before? I'm going to say no. I can't imagine that they ever have. (laughs) Kyle's. Oh, I see Kyle going for the keyboard. I see him, Kyle, going for the keyboard. All right, we're going to move on to enemy player to watch. Jalen Carter. I've been saying his name like it's I'm not going to bury the lead. I've been saying it all damn show. It's Jalen Carter. Ohio's one of the weakest spots on Ohio State's team is the interior offensive line. One of the absolute strengths of this Georgia team is Jalen Carter at the interior of the defensive line. Petition for national championship to be moved to Green Bay. I I like that idea, but can we do Chicago instead? Let's let's go Soldier Field. 
Um, and I'm look, and I'm looking up Jared all the way back. No, we're playing in the cold, Zach. We're playing in the cold. To the, the 1800s idea. here, Jared. Every single game has been in Columbus or Ann Arbor. He didn't even say Michigan and Ohio. <laughs> there wasn't like a stray Toledo in there either. A stray Cleveland or a stray Detroit. No. Straight up Ann Arbor and Columbus. All right. My, my enemy player to watch. I don't think I've ever got to say a stray Detroit before. <laughs> it's a new sentence. It's Brock. It's, it's Brock Bowers. He's. He's the guy that Bennett goes to to throw it to. I mean, leads a team in receptions, in yardage, in reception touchdowns. He's the guy that really makes the offense go on the running attack too. If you can if you can stop him from, or even just slow him down from making um, those critical third down catches for first downs. I think Ohio State has a good shot of winning this game, but you got you got to stop Bowers somehow. So that's my player to watch. You're not wrong. Um, Chuck Daddy says, I don't trust us to beat uh, Michigan or Georgia in a straight-up bully ball situation. We need the pass. I agree. All right. Key matchup, Jared. What is your key matchup? Jalen Carter versus the interior offensive line of Ohio State. I am. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be creative or varied here. I'm just trying to tell the truth. Yeah. And Washington also the second uh, line or excuse me, the second tight end is also a, a good one there chop to watch uh, mine. Very similar to like your, your theme, Jared. Mine is the Ohio state linebackers <laughs> versus Georgia's tight ends. Georgia loves running the 12 offense. So one running back two tight ends. Yep. It's tough. They, they Georgia takes out speed and plays bigger, more physical type of football. And Ohio State has to match up to that. Yeah. Uh, Chop uh, Stewart, a.k.a. Chop Daddy, says uh, Washington is a strong side defensive end playing tight end. You're not, not wrong. wrong. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The spread in this game, Jared, is Georgia by six and a half. I'm taking you're giving me six and a half points to take Ohio State. Like, I'm I'm gonna pick Ohio State to win this game as well. And you can call me a homer for that. You can. You can call me a homer for that. That's fine. But I am being just straight up honest with you. If you're gonna give me six and a half points to take Ohio State. I don't give a if they're playing the 2000 Ravens, the 1985 Chicago Bears or Tom Brady and Randy Moss's New England Patriots. I am taking Ohio State minus six and a half. Giving me six and a half point buffer to pick Ohio State to win a football game. I'm going to take that every day, every day. Mm -hmm. Yep, I, I agree. That's. It's a lot of it's a lot of points there, and I'll I'll pick Ohio State to pick the spread. Um, to yeah, I'll pick Ohio State on the spread there. And the winner of the game, Jared. I already said Ohio State. Winner, I already gave it away. Well, I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. Oh wait, uh, I I I have them backwards there. Uh. Fuck it, I'm going to Ohio State to win this game, Jared. <laughs> you turned around. To... <laughs> you turned around the Bulldog. I don't know how I didn't notice that until just now. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Ohio That's State funny. to win in a 2014 fashion, 42 to 35. Hey, hey, uh, everyone in the chat, everyone in the chat. Who are you picking for the spread? Who are you picking for the spread? Six and a half. Ohio State, the Buckeyes, and Georgia. Okay. So we already know Zach's picking Georgia to win. Um, so Stewart and Gangland. 
Who are you picking to win the game? Since we don't have like a guest picker lined up for this. I think we can pull it out, says Gangland. Stewart's going to be a smart ass. I can just tell by the uh, Ohio State uh, for your confidence pool. All right. I did too, by the way. I picked Ohio State in my, in my confidence pool. I put one point on it. <laughs> I put two points on it. I put two points on it. I picked Ohio State in the confidence pool. All right. Um, I'm on, which I'm, I'm getting my butt kicked in right now for the record. Um, As is tradition. <laughs> Yeah. Gangland, who didn't understand the scoring, is currently in first place. Uh, not Bowling Green. Bowling I don't... Green did lose. Yeah, not Bowling Green. Uh, who they... New Mexico State, is that who they were playing? I believe it was, yeah. Um. All right. Final score prediction, and I, I need y'all in the chat playing this as well. Final score prediction. I have Ohio State 31 and Georgia 28. Kyle? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. I didn't go nice. Sorry. I didn't. I didn't it's do it. It's a 59. It's a 59. Yeah. Nearly nice. Fair enough. Kyle, what's your final score prediction? I said it already. Did you not oh. hear me? Apparently, I, in, I didn't. In, in, in a 2014 fashion. Gotcha. 42 to 35. I got all distracted by the bulldog being backwards is what happened. Because <laughs> I'm surprised you did it. <laughs> it's Kyle, For anyone who doesn't know, that's Kyle's high school uh, mascot. That's why the bulldog's there. Um. All right, score predictions in the chat. We have but the Zach. Colors, but the good colors, though. But the good colors, yes. It's gray, not black. And it's the proper shade of red, a.k.a. scarlet. Yes. They, they, not, they, they do, what, what does George... They, they do identify it as scarlet. We there you do, go. My high school does identify as scarlet. What does Georgia call their red? It's a very dark red. While you're looking that up. Uh, Zach says, uh, Georgia 45, Ohio state 31, uh, Stewart says 42 to 27, Ohio state and gangland says 42, 31. I'm the only one predicting a low score here, low score by college football standards. Uh, but yeah, the gangland 42, 31, Ohio state. Uh, Yours is uh, nice. Stewart. Uh, Yours is nice. What do it they call it? Arch black. Okay. And... Time out. Time out. There, black is black. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You can have different shades of red. You can have different saturations of red. Black is black. Shut the fuck up, Georgia. Right, please continue, <laughs> Kyle. They identify it as bulldog red. I but right. everywhere no I'm done. I see, it, it I'm just, done it just says red it's not red it's too dark to be red mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah I'll put the hex colors in there Jared and you can oh look God, yeah, it I is love Kyle's not, putting look at Kyle putting the hex colors it in is there. not a typical red oh it is not here's the thing it's also I want to see this hold on um Everyone, Discord server, Patreon server, T-shirt stores, um, yada yada yada. Kyle, uh, what do you? What's in Kyle's corner? I uh, want to see this on corner? a grid. What's in the Kyle corner? <laughs> um, honestly, Jared, I didn't have much in, in Kyle's corner to be honest. Um, I, I'll just I'm just going to look up the basketball schedule here because I do believe they play Wednesday here. Um, I'm just pulling it up real quick. Again, I apologize. I don't have um, had it already here. They do play Saturday. No, excuse me. I'm sorry. Thursday. They play Thursday against Alabama A&M. 3 p.m. tip off. And then they start their Big Ten. Um, 
or not start, but because they already played one game, but they resumed their Big Ten play against Northwestern next Sunday, 7.30 against Northwestern. So I'm pointing out that uh, it's not even a pure red. Uh, it has a bit of green and a decent amount of blue in it. It's not even a pure red. Ohio State, if you're curious, Scarlet is a is a red that is a it is a tad darker than pure red. So it's shaded a bit darker than a pure red. Um but this this is not a this is not a pure red by Georgia. This is not a pure red by Georgia. We got blue in there and a tiny bit of green. What a what a terrible red. I'm I'm an expert in reds. That's a terrible red. It's 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 a absolutely atrocious red. Here, Jared. <laughs> that's a proper red that Kyle's. Well, and actually, and also that's a Jared. Also yeah. Jared. Most importantly, we haven't even mentioned it at all, Jared. Uh huh. Oh yes. Well, you you can't be pointing at your sleeves because you. Jared gray slightly sleeves. more than red. Yes, gray sleeves are returning once again, and I am all for the gray sleeve jerseys. Yes, I you know as a gray sleeve lover myself, I'm I kind of like that they basically just hold it back for special occasions. I kind of like it. Um, is minstrel red a thing, Stuart? Because that sounds familiar. Uh, it sounds like a slur. I hope not, because I just said it. Uh, all right, that's it. That's the end of the show. Kyle did his corner. I did the plugs. Um, tonight's ending music brought to you by a band. There, there's your gray sleeves in the chat. Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. This is the, and this is the first time. Sorry, Jared. This is the first time. I, I did not realize this until um, actually just a a little less than a week ago. This is the first time that they've gone to the Peach Bowl. Yes. Ohio State has the opportunity to be the first team to win all six of the uh, New Year's Six Bowls as well. Which is a fun accomplishment. Yes. All right. I'm done now. Go ahead. We will call that the Buckeye Smash for now on. I hope they do it, but they won't. Hey, it's okay, Zach. Um, I mean, like Vegas is on your side. Um, that, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. Tonight's ending music brought to you by a band, kind of a uh, uh, call them. We'll call them a. I want to say acoustic punk band or folk punk band uh, from Columbus. They're called Two Cow Garage. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Two Cow Garage. <laughs>